Well, hey there, team. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to some more Station Ears. So, we had a big success at the end of the last episode. Look at this thing. It's just going to approach. Well, I guess, uh, we'll just keep going, right? People were discussing uh, that apparently it's got to do with infrared cooling is how vacuum cooling works. It's pretty cool. I appreciate people looking into it. Doesn't mean a whole lot to me. So, a few things to discuss here really quickly. Um, I, I didn't mean to be dismissive. I appreciate that. That's cool that there is actually an answer to it. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, this is has solved our problems. So there's one level that we can go further, right? And that's where we gather up X, which is a type of... Well, we haven't got any in here. CO2, eh? Except from me, my suit's leaking. Um, we gather up X, which is the best specific heat capacity in the game. It's it's ideal for pollutant. Uh, sorry, it is a pollutant, but it's ideal for coolant. There's not much else to do with it. We we bottle that up. We put it in a pipe system, right? We run the pipe through here, and we actually put like a radiator, radiators along the pipe. And then my thought is, we can run other gas lines. In fact, we could have a, a, a gas line with all our gases thrown in when we're harvesting, right? And throw it through here and do the same radiation therapy as well. It'll create a faster heat exchange, have this always vacuuming. And at least when we're not pumping new gas or anything like that, and it's just coolant, the coolant between the coolant and the pipe and probably in a reservoir in a tank of some sort, that'll all be in here and we'll have radiators making it cha uh, exchange even more. So not only will we have this vacuum room for speed cooling, we'll actually have a reservoir of gas hooked up to a radiator that's like cooled to absolute zero as well. So it should super freeze other pipes in here that, well, I shouldn't say freeze because I don't think we state change. But um, super cool, even faster, because it won't just be zero exchange. It'll be radiator exchange between the pollutant taking up the heat as well. And then when that's all done, that will cool as well over time. So we could actually probably make this cool even faster. Um, and then I start to think about myself, well, what's the harm of having a whole bunch of gases in one line together if you've got it at super freezing temperatures, well, not much. I don't think they can really do anything. They can't explode as long as your system doesn't stop working. So it makes a lot of sense to me that when we get to, uh, it's going to be difficult to replicate it here. We will harvest the atmosphere here to a point, but the plan is to harvest Vulcan specifically for the H2. We would run a pipe through this coolant room to then be counter cooled by the, the coolant radiator pipe of X and the cold of this room. So anyway, long story short, everything's working well. Active vent on. Yep, that's cool. So that's something for us to work on. Someone suggests we could have a second fan in here. I don't think the extra particles when we come in and out of here to monitor it are going to make that big a difference. It's a fair point, and you could do it if you really wanted to min-max it, but I don't know if it's uh, top priority right now. How are our plants looking? They're looking pretty marvellous. Okay, so we have created a small problem, though, because we have to have that fan always running, ultimately. That's sort of the crux of it, which means we need to shore up our power situation. So um, I think the next solar panels, which require potentially logic, um, are uh, require steel. So that's one option, but I would also like to take this option or the this opportunity to um, potentially look at my turbine suggestion that I thought I thought up. Um, hmm. What we might actually do is put a bunch more flat panels here, and potentially look into maybe trying to get a larger battery involved. Huh. Yeah, that might be the go. So then we can actually store more during the day to last us through the night. So it's all it's more more fits and spurts. Um Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, cool. So I think the solar panels all live in here. Solar panel basic. 
No, he's not that bad. Oh, needs more iron, naturally. Yeah, so... Actually, we've got all these extra frames that I built too many of. Hmm. Yeah, this might be the perfect time to put my, my little uh, wind tunnel to the test. The one sort of unknown, I'll, I'll lay it out again, but I explained it in a previous episode. The one big unknown in what I have suggested is knowing how much pressure throughput you need. Like I said, I'm planning on bottlenecking it on either side because the ambient pressure here is just not enough. Oh, did I have to put a wall kit? Ah, that's what it looks like. All right, Jay. Uh, are you still on? Can I, yeah, I can hear someone humming. All right. Wall. Well, I only need just the one. There we go. How's your alignment? I guess it doesn't really matter if you're flat, so we'll just put it like that so it's straight on. Oh, here's some glass I prepared earlier. Um... Oh, did we run totally out of cable? Okay. Oh. Oh, you fucking idiot. <laughs> it was bound to happen one day. Print off a little bit of cable. How come you're not red? Hmm. All right, well, that's something. That'll get us going. So, what I'm going to do is... Build my tunnel. I'm going to need my sheets, or my frames, rather. Yeah, good. It's kind of cool that we can just sort of build off to the side and have things not interfere too much. Um, yeah, I'm not really building out this way anyway, so not the end of the world. Okay, cool. So let's consider for a moment. Active vent pumps in. Turbine wall, turbine wall. They do 90 a piece, so 180 if it's going full efficient. And the two, the active vent and the back pressure regulator draw 100 each, so that's 200. So at the very minimum, we would need it to be three fans for it to work. All right. Now, I might actually be able to get away with doing this with wall kits, um, at least even to observe, um, I'm, because I don't know what the pressure is and there's no real statistics out there for it. So can I just build floating blocks? Yeah. Let's just put those up there. And then we'll walk it in. 
Well, I mean, look, shit, I've already got the bloody... I've got these, so I might as well use them, right? The, the, the main concern here is I don't know how much pressure you're going to need for... Uh, like a profitable, for a max chicken's throughput on the turbine. It could be 50 kPa will get it turning. I, I, I simply don't know. Um, so I guess we'll have to, we'll have to find out. Um, but at least if we do it this way, because normal walls or windows, whatever you want to call them, can only hold 100 kPa before they blow off, right? So we could build a prototype real quick um with windows so we'll at least be able to watch the turn of the fans we'll also be able to draw data off we've done something like this before but again that time it was about state change this time it's not actually this time it's about um forced throughput pressure it's actually fundamentally very different 16 iron one two three Four, five, six, seven. That's not that many. Wall. I figure this is as good a time as any to pivot to this because uh, we need to solve this power problem. And the other option is to just build a million fucking solar panels. So if this doesn't work, well, we'll do that, you know? the fuck? Turn. There we go. Alright. The, now, the other advantage is if the pressure can take it, that using windows, we could actually greenhouse effect this, uh... This thing. Fuck it, we'll just seal it up and I'll have to cut the walls down as required. Um, so having having the air in the chamber heat up will actually create more pressure than what we're just sort of throughputting, which is awesome. Um, okay, so let's consider each of these frames is going to be two to seal. Shit, there's no getting around it. We need more iron because I think we just ran out. Oh. I may even, I may even end up pulling down those frames, you know, and just making wall kits. It might work out to be economic. Oh, who, well, who really cares if I've got a few bit of extra resources? Jeez, we going deep, bam. Okay, this is a good haul. So we're going through iron like it's no one's business. All right. Let's just put that there. I must be the one I'm wearing, right? Woo, look at that. Delicious. Hook this bad boy up. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. Now, the turbines themselves, they're going to require some steel, I believe. Oh. 
Oh, that's auto lathe. What are you doing? We want this. Hunger. Really? Caution. You're going to put it in the electro printer? Oh, I'm surprised by that. Solder. It requires solder. Ah, okay, interesting, because that's what we were struggling with before. Um, okay. Not the end of the world. We've still probably got the gear in here to make solder for our upgrade to the, yeah, iron and lead. And it's a one-to-one -one mix, right? Four, eight, 12. I'll need at least 12 to do that. All right, let's just, oh, hang on, that's finished. We don't want that blown away in the wind. Uh, we'll put you in the auto lathe. We'll turn you off. We'll go in for a feed. We still got to attend our rounds, you know? Oh, hang on. Set out, which should be inward then. Thirty degrees. We're getting up there. Thirty-one degrees. How are the plants going? They don't seem to give a shit. All right. Bloody invincible. Jesus. 20 stack, 20 stack, and three. We, whoa, we're getting there. 30% O2. These plants are not messing around. 33 degrees. I mean, there's no H in here, but like, it's a lot of O2. <laughs> like, maybe we should worry about it. Ah, but maybe not. Whatever. Why'd your garden blow up? Because my plants were going overtime. All right, that's fine. 33 degrees, let's push it out. I don't mind if they die. I want to see what happens. I kind of want to get those statistics. All right. Get me that empirical evidence. So... Yeah, look, we should probably do another cook. Especially now that we've established that I want more. Um, all right, so we did a uh, like a one to three or something like that before, and it wasn't quite enough. I think we were short up for pressure was the problem. Um, that's the problem with me having so many plates spinning. Okay, hang on. Split. All right, so let's... Let's just put two to two and just see what happens, especially now that it's already in there, you know? Oh, why did you melt immediately? That worries me. Oh, but he will persevere with the experiment nonetheless. Oh, it's warm. Interesting. I like this. I like that it's fucking with us, that it's making life harder. Uh, solder, right? Waste tank. Caution. Oh, yeah. We're cooking the waste tank. <laughs> oh, man. Maybe we should turn that fan on. Um... What does it want? One MPA to 100, that's fine. But the temperature, it's too hot, right? It needs to come down to 350. Well, 550, actually, if you think about it. Pressure's dropping fast as well. 
Hmm. So 550 above one MPA and 550. What waste tank, eh? What happened to the last waste tank? Oh, I'm carrying it around with me. What are we going to do about all this, eh? Pick that up. Yeah, see how hot that is as well, because that was also in that room. At least we can cool it down in here. But my waste tank is, well... I wonder if the percentage will drop. It's probably drawing heat out of my tank now. As I stand here, right? Hmm. Okay. Yeah, so that sucked a whole bunch of O2 through. That's cool. Yet another problem we need to be careful about. All right, let's leave that tank in there cooling. We'll just accept that the one on my backpack is quite warm. We may even need to, uh... Get a new tank. Temperature. Temperature's still too high, right? Yeah, 550, but over 1 MPA. Oh, it's coming down fast. That's cool. All right. Hmm. I need to come up with a system to deal with this gas that's passing through me. That sounds sus, doesn't it? But, um... Yeah, we need to have like a, a, a drop off or something like that. I might need to just actually make a new, new waste tank at this point. Um, where would I do that? Here. Yeah, you've got the iron. Yeah, I think, I think that's a smart move. Lucky we made this cooling room, eh? Yeah. Oof, it got, that got really hot. Okay. And it's cool that, like, uh, it's sort of a hazard of the job now. All right, now we've gone below pressure. All right, so, like, Fuck. That just instant melted. Of course it instant melted. It's because it's under reaction. Um, can I split this really quick? Before the sun comes up? Yeah. 
And can I put oxide in? Oh. We'll produce eight ingots of solder. Yes. Look at that. The pressure's perfect. And oh, <laughs> we just bumped it over. Okay, cool. Um, too bad I don't have more lead. Well, hang on. Do I have any more lead? Ten lead? Actually, no, I think I've missed the target now, right? Oh, 350, 550, but one MPA? Ah, the pressure's too low. Bugger, because otherwise I would cook some more straight away. That's cool. That's cool. All right. Well, hang on. How much, how far away are we from the electronics upgrade to Constantum, Solder, and Electro bloody doodaki? Hmm. Don't know. This is interesting as well because um, when I was meeting out the, my like hotshot measurements for my previous furnace that I, that I made on the moon, it was all done sort of, I didn't regulate the temperatures very well. Like things were done in a vacuum. I'm kind of blocking my panels there. But um, I did it all by pressure management, me measurement. Like I'd go 100 or uh, 50 kPa of this and 50 k of volatile and 50 kPa of O2 or whatever, right? Now the problem is if you have fluctuating different temperatures, that's actually going to be different molarities. But I don't know if there's an easier way to really measure it out in this game. I don't, I'm don't. i not 100% sure. I mean, at the very least, you'd need to have a, a constant temperature. Um, so this would be interesting, like coming up with the right fuel mixes and all that. It would all be dependent on having your fuel mix at a certain prerequisite temperature. And I have to wonder if the way that we're running the coolant system, that's going to shore up and, and potentially, I, I really need to hurry up and put the the pollutant through there and see if I can make it cool even faster with radiators and just make everything cool. We might actually be able to keep like absolute zero uh, fuel mix. And at least that way, we can keep it consistent for measurement. So when we, when we measure out the correct ratios and a pressure amount, that we're going to use to cook, say, solder, it's all done with, like, absolute zero um, H2 and O2. So that way it's always a consistent measurement because, you know, 50 kPa of H2 that's 100 degrees is very different to that if it's negative 100 degrees. You know what I mean? Like, uh, the temperature's changed, but the volume hasn't changed, right? So, um, yeah. Right? Right? I'm not going insane, am I? Yeah, PV equals NRT. Yeah, and so... Oh, my God. I I haven't... Funnily enough, chemistry was, like, my worst thing ever. But um, that's all good. This is all good practice. Oh, wow, that battery's worse. Okay. Cool. We're getting there. We're getting there. Chipping away. Um, but, uh, yeah, the, that... Uh, Getting the temperatures right with just ice, I kind of dig how fucked it is. <laughs> it's really good. We have to think about that a lot. All right, team. Uh, thanks again for joining me. Might just leave it there for the time being, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.